That's right, it's time to talk about more Anthem, and we've got news about how the loot system will work compared to other games of the genre like Destiny, Owen? then also the some big differences between the suits in terms of maneuverability and mobility, as well as more details about the Storm Class Javelin, and much more. This is a big video. Oh, also, we're going to go over some new details about the fort, and the mobile command center known as the Strider, which I think is a really cool feature. I think you guys will be thrilled with some of the features that they're implementing related to the Strider. So, guys, welcome back to Open World Games. Let's dive straight into this right now. So, I had a chance to go hands-on with Anthem, of course, at E3. Had a blast with it. And uh, a lot of you guys uh, have some questions. And Brennan Holmes... Uh, of Bioware was kind enough to answer those questions out on Reddit. So let's dive into those right now. So the first one is about the Storm Class Javelin. So uh, Flanders says, hopefully there's still this level of customization with the functional appearance of the Storm at this point, as it seems to be solely lightning based. And Brennan Holmes replied saying, the Storm in the demo had a lightning ability and an ice shards equipped on its RB and LB slots. There are other types of equipment you can equip to change up the gameplay. Uh, so there's going to be different ways to modify your abilities, it seems. Hopefully we do get more extensive subclasses as well as time goes on. But I imagine they will eventually add more javelin as uh, we progress uh, through the game's journey, I guess you would say. Also, some more details about the Storm class, which looks like a badass class. Uh... Crimson says this, when the storm was hovering, we didn't see a heat bar or something. Can you hover forever with the storm? It looks like that if you hover with the storm, you don't feel the heat bar, but also won't empty it. And uh, Brennan says the storm hover is different than the other suits. You hover by pressing jump again. It does not generate heat. Right now, there's no limitation on it. You can hover forever. That could change, though I think we're largely happy with it as it is at the moment end quote what do you guys think do you think the storm class should be able to hover indefinitely or do you think that's too op uh honestly it just looks like uh, a tra traversal mechanic in my opinion i don't think it's that big of a deal so i'm fine with it uh once you enter a pvp and stuff like that that's a different story of course with those types of abilities but uh the hovering reminds me of uh, some of the other classes' abilities just to run around and stuff like that. So, uh, a lot of the classes have uh, unlimited sprint, for example. So, that's what I consider almost the hover ability to be like for the storm. All right, let's move on. So, let's talk about some of the differences between uh, the javelin. So, uh, Crimson says, thanks for the reply. And it definitely is really interesting way to make the storm different from the other javelins. And maybe another javelin will have something else that's different. And Brennan did elaborate on this, saying each suit has unique elements. Ranger has double jump and dash. Colossus has deployable shield and a thruster-based jump, etc. So, each class is going to be, uh, you know, having different abilities, different movesets, and stuff like that. And you can see here some of the cool customization that we will be able to get into, by the way. Uh, with the actual look of our javelins. This is the ranger class, by the way. But yeah, expect different movesets and the like for our javelins uh, from Javelin to Javelin. It's going to be another reason why I think a lot of us are going to want to jump into different javelins. Which, by the way, you can actually uh, upgrade all of your javelins in one career go, it sounds like, and switch back and forth between them. And then as you're out in the world, you'll be collecting loot uh, that might not be for the javelin you're currently piloting. I did mention that in a previous video. So let's talk about the uh, loot-based uh, reward system and how that's going to be similar or different to Destiny 2 and other games of this uh, loot-based genre, I guess you would say. So let's talk about Ingram. So uh, Vapid Reaper says the Ingram route is the best route for them to ensure you always come back to the fort, your little your little private space, excuse me, where it's your story. It is the conveyor belt that feeds you into the story and progress of your progression of your fort. If you didn't have the Ingram system, you wouldn't visit the fort. You would visit the fort less for sure. 
And that's definitely an interesting take on it. Now, Brennan did reply. He says, this is one of the primary reasons we went in this direction. Additionally, when you're out in the field, we want to encourage people to be unified in their intent. Finishing the mission, revealing loot right away starts to put you into a different mindset. And we didn't really want to worry about people modifying loadouts mid-mission. Uh, so that's one reason why they're going for more for more mystery behind what loot you get. But let me elaborate on this, guys, a little bit further for you. Because there are more details about this exactly what you're seeing when you obtain your loot. So, uh, Brynn goes on to say, you're not wrong. But in order to equip some of that sexy loot, you need to be back at your forge. So we streamlined this a bit for you. After the reveal post-mission, you know what you got and what you can immediately go to the forge to equip it. Instead of knowing and being unable to equip it in the field. So they really don't want you constantly switching your load at loadouts, it sounds like, uh, when you are you know, on your missions. That could kind of interrupt the gameplay flow. And I definitely hear them on that one. Now, uh, he did reply to another guy out there. He says, there are a few differences in what we're doing. When you get the drop, it tells you the rarity and the type of item you'll get. So, for example, if you kill something and it has a rare drop, when you pick it up, you'll see that you're going to get a rare assault rifle. So, there's a bit more information which may partially address what you're getting at. Uh, end quote. So, yeah, when you pick up, uh, you know... Whatever you find, we did get to see that here in uh, the initial gameplay demonstration. Uh, you'll get to see, at the very least, the type of weapon it sounds like that you will be getting. You won't be able to go deep dive into it, though, and see exactly every little statistic. You're going to have to basically unlock that by going to the fort and then equipping it. But something really cool to note here is that you can do a lot from the Strider as well, which, by the way... Uh, let me see if I could find uh, the Strider. It should be at the beginning. Here it is. This is the Strider. This is going to be like your mobile command center. And it is so badass. So this is something uh, you will be able to look forward to in uh, Anthem. I have some more details about how that's going to work uh, along with the Forge. So Brendan Holmes says there's a Forge in the Strider as well when you return after your mission. You could swap out your gear if you need B. So yeah, you can just return to your little mobile command post there instead of going back to the fort all the time. You can go back to your strider, which I think is a very, very wise decision because it's going to limit a lot of frustration with uh, players having to keep breaking the immersion of the open world experience. I think players want to stay in that open world experience and not constantly be pulled back to... You know, loading screen after loading screen after loading screen. So, for me personally, I would love to be able to just roam around the open world, take on a mission, uh, face a stronghold, go back to my strider, uh, and then, you know, equip my new gear, break it down, whatever you have to do that are in your strider, and then exit the strider, keep going with minimal load time, with minimal, uh, you know, interruption. I think that's super important. Then if I, you know, want to continue the story instead of doing just the side activities, I say, hey... You know what? Time to go back to the fort where I can engage with the NPCs and all the main characters and progress the story. That sounds like uh, a lot of fun to me. And I, it sounds like that's what they're going to be offering with a lot of the uh, new systems that they've implemented with the Strider and then the other stuff uh, with, uh, you know, the Forge and the Fort. So sounds like they're definitely in tune to keeping the gameplay loop going. But let me know what you guys make of all of this of course and if you missed the previous video i did about the customization i will be throwing that in the description below there's a lot of cool skins uh, that they showed off and a lot of people kind of missed that and i wanted to show you those uh, skins to you guys as well as some of the pre-order bonuses that you're seeing here that you can actually get some really cool looking skins as well if you just simply pre-order i think the standard edition uh, so you can find out more about that by uh, following the link in the description below of course but you can see how uh some of these skins really do stand out some of them are more uh toned back and uh more i guess you would say military like and this one kind of reminds me of uh mass effect in some ways and then you have uh the reverse of what we just saw which is the all black 
red and then the white trimming there as well. This one is pretty cool too. And uh, by the way, you will also be able to exchange out uh, your gear as well. So it's not just um, basically seeing a new skin here or a new paint job, if you will. You can change your helmet. You can change your chest piece uh, as you go. And uh, the skin will still be on there, of course. Uh, so that's really cool. That's something I was kind of worried about if it was just going to be some sort of uh, you know, just paint job and that's it. But yeah, there's going to be several different types of armor pieces you will be able to unlock and upgrade and things like that. And then you have the more super realistic tones that you can go for. Military look, which I think I'm going to be going for more of a realistic look or more of an Iron Man approach as well. But yeah, a lot of fun stuff that we'll be able to do with our javelins as we go out into the open world and explore. But there it is, guys. The latest happenings around Anthem. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, smack that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Stay updated about Anthem. And I cannot wait to find out more about this game. Hopefully, we find out more here at Gamescom 2018. That's going to be happening in August. Uh, it's the big, I guess you would call it the E3 uh, in Europe. So, I can't wait for it. I should be going there. Hopefully getting more details about Anthem for you guys. I did get to go hands-on with it at E3. So, cross my fingers, I get to do stuff with it again. But guys, thanks for watching. I will see you later. And soon enough in this fantastical world.